Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so what I will talk about is primarily data science and machine learning. And uh, you could argue that these things are pretty much the holy grail of, of the data economy. So everybody expects that data science and machine learning and AI, uh, those are the fields that can really have the biggest impact and the biggest benefit for most businesses. Um, so what I will try to do is uh, to walk you through a very quick, probably the quickest ever data science project uh, to see how it can potentially fail uh, and how you can ruin your business with it. Uh, but let's uh, set some definitions straight in the beginning. Uh, so we are talking about all these technologies and all these kind of buzzwords. Uh, these have been misused in so many times. So just a very quick uh, overview. So when we talk about AI, it's something that mimics human behavior. Um, and when machine learning comes up, it's typically when we try to mimic that human behavior or try to predict things based on historical evidence. So we have some data, uh, and we would like to um, teach the machine uh, what the patterns are, and the machine can potentially predict what's coming up. And deep learning, you may hear about that too. It's uh, just the one form of machine learning. Uh, that can do it highly effectively, especially recognizing cats and dogs on images, apparently not fire trucks at this point. And when we talk about data science, I think it has a broader perspective. So all these three others are more like uh, fundamental technologies and fields where really serious research is going on to, to push the boundaries. And for data science, I, I prefer to look at it as kind of a combination of these things. And then you try to apply these things to a specific business domain, to a specific business problem. And um, as Mati was also talking about it, 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 in many cases it just starts with data processing to get our data in a good shape, maybe to, also to collect it. And then we can really get to machine learning and uh, have the benefits. So just a brief summary of what we are talking about here. So I will try to walk you through uh, a quick data science project. And when I was wondering what would be the appropriate field, the appropriate topic where we would uh, dive deep into data science, after some time it was so obvious that we should talk about aliens. Everyone cares about aliens to some extent, so, so let's see what we can find out about them based on data. Believe it or not, there is an amazing data set collected by the National UFO Reporting Center. I'm still shocked that there is such an organization uh, existing. They have 80,000 Let's stop for a moment. 80,000 UFO sightings with beautiful descriptions of what happened, where it happened, and when it happened. Um, it's a public data set, so you can go ahead and download it and, and look at it. Uh, so let's use this data set as a base for our data science project, as an example. And full disclosure, I have a family member in a leadership role in the Hungarian UFO Society. <laughs> so. Let's take it seriously, okay? We have been hired by the Hungarian UFO Society to figure this out, so um, let's give them a chance. So let's look at the data. Typically what you do in a data science project initially is to try to understand the underlying data first. So, um, okay, let's plot the number of UFO sightings over time. It seems that in 1993 there's a big jump and an increasing trend in the number of UFO sightings. Um, does anyone know what happened in 1993? Not sure how many of you are aware of the TV series called The X-Files. So The X-Files started in 1993. So if we are part of the Hungarian UFO Society and we need to make our conclusions as a serious data scientist, there could be only one re uh, explanation for this. The aliens are fans of The X-Files. I mean, it's so obvious if there would be a show about data scientists, I would absolutely watch it every time. So yeah, they, they might be interested to see how their buddies um, are, are dealing with uh, Scully and Mulder. Um, so yeah, this, this looks pretty good so far. So aliens love TV shows. They love the X-Files. Let's see which day and which part of the day they show up. Um, when you see the orange, there is more activity, so more UFO sightings happening. In the blue areas, there is not much going on. So if you look at it, it pretty much happens in the evenings, and there is especially a high peak on Saturdays. So again, conclusions, aliens work hard and party hard. <laughs> they are really social beings. They join us in our Saturday drinks and, uh, and enjoy our, their time with us. Um, this is all good so far, so let's see um, when they show up during the year. 
so if you have a weekly breakdown on when these sightings happen, um, there is the week of July 4th, where there is this huge peak. Um, July 4th happens to be the Independence Day in the US. So um, yeah, if you think about it, the only reasonable explanation is that aliens love America. <laughs> And fireworks, by the way, because on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, there is also some uh, increased activity. Um, so yeah, it, it looks pretty good so far. We have a basic understanding of the data. We tend to we start to understand the alien behavior already. So let's do some machine learning and try to predict where they will show up next. So if you are from the UFO Society, I'm pretty sure that you would love to meet these guys. Um, so yeah, maybe you build a predictive model, a machine learning model that will tell you where will, will, will they show up next. So okay, based on historical data and patterns, you kind of figure out what's the likelihood. So let's say in 10% that they show up in Amsterdam at some point. So you book your trip to Amsterdam to make sure to be there. Um, so let me stop here with this, uh, with this project. Um, I'm pretty sure that if we would deliver this project as is to the UFO Society, they would be really enthusiastic about it. Um, and just to make it clear, we haven't made any uh, data science um, mistakes here. So if the only thing which you can challenge is the initial assumption that these are real UFO sightings and real aliens visiting us. If you take that assumption for granted, all that we did are statistically correct and completely correct from the data science and machine learning perspective. So it's quite disturbing uh, for, for me as a data scientist that if you have such a basic, simple assumption, it can skew your analysis completely. Um, so, and we tend to believe that we are way more objective than those guys in that society, um, but it tends not to be true. So uh, there is something called a bias blind spot. So if I would ask this group, uh, what do you believe? Are you more biased than average or less biased than average? I mean, most people say, yeah, I'm more objective than others, and they just do not get it. They, they do not understand. They are subjective. I'm the objective one. Um, and this is pretty much a big, big pattern. So 85% of the people, they believe that they are more objective and, and less biased than others. Only 1% is saying that I'm more biased than average. I pretty much admire that 1%. They are so self-reflective that they can really recognize that. Um, so it seems we have a problem that we base our assumptions, we have these assumptions in data science, and I would argue that many of those assumptions are wrong. And you build all your workflow, all your project on those assumptions. And you tend not to verify uh, some of that. So, um, one argument would be how to address that is, hey, now we have these great technologies uh, in machine learning, artificial intelligence. Let's completely get rid of the human in the loop. Let's say that we will solve everything by automated machine learning and AI. Um, it turns out not to be that successful. So there are certainly companies trying to do that. And pretty much what they do is that here, here is our software. Just upload your data, push this red button, and we will do AI for you. Well, to some extent it works to some domains, but there are clear failures. Like um, there has been uh, some projects to try to predict future crime. Very early on, this project, this automated AI became very racist and said, oh, black people are doing crime. Um, same with, I'm not sure if you have uh, read about this chatbot from Microsoft. They started to train it on Twitter messages. It very quickly became homophobic and racist again, and then had hate speech going on. Um, so it seems it's really hard to do it automatically. And without naming the vendor, there's uh, this cognitive systems um, trend that some vendors are pushing. And they are getting a lot of bad press about their products failing in healthcare and in other areas that they do not deliver on the promise. Because the promise was that, hey, just give us the data you have. We have this automagical system that will automatically solve it for you. No, it cannot. We need the human domain expertise. We need some guidance for these algorithms to really have the benefits. So what I would argue is that we, we really need balance between these two. We cannot just have our own judgment and make, uh, base everything on, on just human gut feeling. Uh, but also, we cannot fully rely on these tools. So we need to balance these things. And um, I think all the recent successes in machine learning um, come from, from places where this balance has been there. 
I mean, if you read papers from, you probably heard about the AlphaGo system defeating the Go champion. Uh, the game of Go is now um, pretty much the machines can took over and they can do better than the, the humans. Um, that initial system was created by a group of people, many of them being Go experts, experts in that game, and also machine learning experts. So it's not like there was some machine learning uh, researcher who just sat down and wrote some fancy algorithm and it magically solved the problem. No, it was really back and forth between those people. Um, and of course, over time they improve it, but um, and, and need less and less of those domain expertise, but it's always there. Um, so you cannot really get rid of it. And when I see failures in these projects, in most cases, is that this balance is not there. They either go for tools and buy the fancy product from some vendor, or they say, yeah, we can do it better and just hire some people and, and try to do it on their own. Um, so I would argue that if you find this balance, you are set up for success to, to have a good uh, data science project, and hopefully it will not your, ruin your business. Thank you very much.